So red version will be doing what? Well, will it be? Wait, will we have? Will it deal then six damage? Hello everyone, today there's a very special YouTube video, at least for me, because this is the first time I'm doing an unboxing of a new product coming from my favorite card game, Flesh and Blood. The friends at Legend Story Studios sent me actually a few things I'll show you first. There's a playmat of the new Ice Mage Lislander. Don't confuse it with Lissander from League of Legends. Very beautiful, my friends. Then we have an actual card of that mage in a coiled foil version, as you can see here. Actually fits very well to her, um, let's say, specialization, right? And of course, that's the entire box of the new expansion. And what is even more special about this one, Everfest, is the first ever that has a paper booster. And we're gonna showcase what is inside and how it looks in a moment. It's a little bit nostalgic, like when you open your presents on Christmas Eve, it actually feels like this, like you're holding a present. So it's uh, it's quite a nice feeling that we have here. Uh, and we're gonna open it because it's, oh, there's, there's like this um, metallic paint in the back, but it's, it's still paper. And as you can see, there's a gap between the paper sheets, so you can just open this very easily. And I don't know what is the order of the cards in the pack, so we're just gonna go one by one, and we're gonna read them out loud, out loud because I don't know them at all. Alright, first card from the new set is a ninja defense reaction. Blue, zero cost. While Wax On is defending an attack action card with cost zero, it has plus two defense, so it will have three defense. This is a common. Okay. Okay, interesting for, for ninjas. Um, so this is like an anti-aggro defense reaction, and I'm guessing there's a red one and yellow one as well. So they would have more even defense on top of that. Interesting card. Alright. Then we have... Outlandic, outland, outland Skirmish for Warrior. Your next one-hand weapon attack this turn gains plus three attack. The next time a weapon attack this hits this turn, create a copper token. Go again. Oh, so more cards are creating are creating copper tokens. Oh, that is very interesting. That is very interesting because from what I remember, we didn't have a deck and 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 constructed that you were using coppers before. And it plus three attack. It's actually pretty big, right? For for a zero cost, plus three, and it creates a copper token. It depends how much value can you get out of the to copper token. This might actually be pretty useful. Brute action attack costs two. It's a yellow. When you attack with bear fangs, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more attack is discarded this way, bear fangs gets plus two attack. So it will go up to seven. If it goes up to 7, I never played Brute, so I don't really have, like, any kind of input here, so I'm just gonna <laughs> skip. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a lot of attack, you know? Okay, another one. Illusionist at at Action Attack, Phantasm. 2 cost, blue. 5 attack. It has Phantasm, of course. When Coalescence's Mirage is destroyed, you may put an Illusionist Aura card with cost 0 from a hand into the arena. Okay. So this is interesting. So when you when this is being destroyed by Phantasm, so it's defended by a card with six or more attack, you get an aura card from your What? From your hand into the arena for free. Okay, this this um ha we have to ask like a illusionist expert. Uh, this seems this seems like pretty good. Saves you a lot of um resources. Okay, now for the mechanologist action attacks. Two cost, blue, four attack, three defense. If you have boosted this combat chain, payload gains dominate. And this is the card, payload. And it's a blue version, so red version would have six attack. Seems pretty okay. Still commons, by the way. All of this is, uh, this, those are all commons. We have Pyroglyphic Protection. If your hero will be dealt Arcan Damage, prevent free Arcan Damage that Souls would deal. At the beginning of your action phase, destroy Pyroglyphic Protection. So this is, I think, the first aura for mages. Two costs, red. P 
prevents three Arcan uh, Arcan damage for one round for two costs. Now you have to like compare this for an Arcan Barian that you can have in your equipment, but this can also be played as an instant if you play a mage typically, right? So maybe valuable. We'll see. Oh, a Ranger action arrow attack card. Yellow, one cost. I am I play a lot of Rangers, so I'm pretty excited for the Ranger cards. When Timidity Point hits a hero, attacks they control, lose, and can gain Dominate during their next turn. Okay, well, this is uh, mostly against Bravo, I guess, right? And against Ice Lexi, maybe? So a Ranger card against other Rangers. <laughs> All right. A common but foil. Beautiful artwork. Pry. Wizard action. Zero cost yellow. It's a rainbow foil. This is all first edition, but only equipment will have called foils. And I guess maybe heroes. Target hero reveals two cards from their hand. If Pry is played during an opponent's turn, instead, they reveal, reveal all cards in their hand. You may choose a card revealed this way. If you do, that hero puts it on the bottom of the deck, then draws a heart. Uh, then draws a card. Hmm. So I'm not sure if I like this card, because he reveals two cards or the entire hand, if it's an instant. You may choose a card of it this way, if you do. Because it puts a card on the bottom of the deck, but he still draws a card. So you can kind of like filter cards that you don't like, but he doesn't lose value. Like, you don't gain value out of this, apart from, uh, like, getting just specific cards out of the hand. Not sure I like this. Okay. Ooh. Talisman of Balance. This is an item for every class. Go again, so you can play it and still play something else in your turn. At the beginning of your end phase, if you have less cards in Arsenal than an opposing hero, destroy Talisman of Balance and put the top card of your deck into an empty arsenal zone you control. If you have less cards and arsenal than an opposing hero, destroying the Okay, at the beginning of your end phase. I wonder if this is like before you actually put a card into your own arsenal? Probably not. And I would have to check if this works with um, New Horizon. Because... No, it has to work with New Horizon. What I'm talking about? Never mind. Never mind. It always works with New Horizon. And another rare. So wait, I'll put rare cards aside. I'll put foils aside. So we have them here. And now this is a high roller brute action. Zero cost, blue. Intimidate. If you have rolled six on a die this turn, instead, intimidate twice. Go again. <laughs> All right, so that's one of the class I will never play. Because whenever I roll dice, it's always a one. So, the high roller, brute action, not for me. But uh, I, I like the I like the flavor of the card. He's actually playing uh, playing dices, uh, playing dice on on the artwork. All right, that's the first booster pack. Let's go. We have twenty three more. All right, we did open the first booster pack. Now we go for the second. Let's go, my friends. So we know that the rare cards are at the end. All right, new illusionist action attack. Phantasm, of course, free cost, red. When phantasmal haze is destroyed, create a spectral shield token. Eight attack, three defense. So you get a little bit of value. If you don't hit anyone, at least you get some value out of it. I didn't play phantasm, uh, sorry, illusionist that much to actually know if this is gonna be worth it or not but it's like every attack that can get out of uh, some value even if it's you know not going through that seems like a good good card for me all right that's common now we have bad beats <laughs> so we had a high roller for brute and now we have bad beats like that's the class that is literally made to be a little bit rng bad beats cost zero has this this one is yellow uh, free defense. Roll a six-sided die. I already know I can never play this card. If the number rolled is a five or six, the next brute attack action card you play this turn gains plus five attack. 
So the 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 possible high roll is insane. But the low roll is you literally lose a card and you gain nothing. I really I am not able to play this class. I would be feels I would be feeling so bad all the time. <laughs> all right, we have in the swing for warrior attack reaction. Zero cost blue. Play in the swing only if you have attacked two or more times with weapons this turn. Target weapon attack gains plus one attack. So wait, you have to attack already two times, and then your weapon gets plus one for the next attack. So I guess this is for more combo versions, like uh, with Bolton, right? When he swings the, the, the swords like six times. I guess that works. I don't know how effective this will be, but it's a uh, warrior attack reaction for zero. Okay. We go next. Ooh, a uh, ranger action. Zero, blue. Your next arrow attack action this turn gains plus one attack. Opt one, go again. So I'm guessing this will also have a red version that will cost exactly the same and have plus three attack with opt one, I guess. Not bad. Not terrible. Not great. Right, but it's, it's like a buff that... Allows you to plan your next round a little bit. For Azalea, maybe this is may maybe will be more useful. Okay. Copper. Hey, let's go. Oh, so I, I will just remind myself what copper does. Four resources, action, destroy copper, draw a card, go again. So now we, we, we remember that common... Uh, where was it? Here. Outland Skirmish. Your next weapon attack has plus three attack. And if it hits, you create a copper token. So this is good value. I would say. Interesting. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe the world, this will actually be played. Uh, rotary Arm for Mechanologist. The next Mechanologist attack action card you play this turn gains plus free attack. If you have boosted this turn, put Rotary Ram on the bottom of your deck. Go again. So you, you pay nothing. You probably boost it because why wouldn't you when you're in a Mechanologist and you save a card and it's essentially just plus free attack for a card. Seems okay. Droning Dire for Runblade action. Has to be broken, right? Everything in, when it comes to Runeblades has to be broken. Okay. Two cost, yellow. Four attack, free defense. So, standard stuff. If you have played or created an aura this turn, Droning Dire gains dominant. Dominate. When Droning Dire hits, you may put a non-attack action card from your graveyard on the bottom of your deck. So, an anti-fatigue, I guess, attack... That costs a lot. Maybe some Rune Blade experts will say if this is playable in some versions of some Rune Blades. Ooh, a foiled Rune... Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, foiled Frostbite. Is that the first possible foiled Frostbite? I think so. I think it is. We didn't have foiled Frostbites. Beautiful. And I have an Ice Lexi deck. So this will go straight into that. Beautiful foil. Really awesome. Too bad it's not coiled foil. I'm actually a little bit upset. But it, it really looks nice. Okay, let's go into the foil section. Even bigger than that, generic instant, cost zero, yellow. Play even bigger than that, only if you have dealt yellow damage this turn. So normal attack. Opt to. Then reveal the top card of your deck. If it has greater attack value than the amount of damage you have dealt this turn, create a Quicken token and draw a card. Oh. So, okay, so this one, wow. Okay, so this one is really good, I think. Of course, it only works when you dealt damage this turn. But if you, re you have opt to, so there's a lot of chances that you will reveal a card that will be actually having more attack than you dealt damage. So it has to be like a, either a super blocked uh, attack if it's buffed, or you, it's, you don't buff and it doesn't deal much damage. But then you gain a quicken token and you draw a card. So this replaces itself. So you filter your deck. I mean, not exactly filter, but you get to choose what will be your next draw. Even if you fail, right? If you Even if you don't draw a card from this, you still get to opt. But if you do manage to to um to fulfill this requirement 
This card replaces itself, and also you, you create Quicken. This, this action might be very good. And we have a Ranger action. Release the Tension. So we had already a card called um, something with Tension. I, I was using it in my deck. One, one uh, resource plus three attack. Your next arrow attack this turn gains plus three attack and defense reactions can be played from Arsenal this chain link for zero and goes again. Wait. It's a very similar effect. But it costs zero and not one. Ah, because this is only from, uh, from Arsenal and I think the other one was actually not allowing you to play it from your hand. Okay. Okay, interesting. So a, a zero cost buff with Gorgon for plus three. And you can play defense reactions from your arsenal. This chain link though. Okay. Let's go. So far, no M cards. Um okay, we already had this. Bad Beats we already had as well, but this is the blue version. So, ah, okay. Yellow version had a success rate on 5 and 6. If you roll 5 and 6, Bad Beats Blue has the same attack value, plus 5, but it only works when you roll 6. So the red version will be when you roll 4, 5, and 6, so it's going to be a 50% rate of success, at least in theory. Nice design. <laughs> Macho Grande is the one card that was already revealed. Dominate, 10 attack, 7 cost, red. Um, veiled Intentions. For Illusionist action, 1 cost, yellow. The next attack action card you play this turn is Illusionist in addition to its other card types. And it gains plus 3 attack, Phantasm. And when this is destroyed, draw a card. Huh. This might be a... a, a... Sorry, I had to sneeze. <laughs> I had to mute my microphone. Um, so this might be a very powerful effect in the future because it allows you to change a type of an attack so you can have more synergies between a generic attack that will be then suddenly an illusionist attack, gains plus three attack, and it also draws a card if it's destroyed. This looks very nice. I think this, is, this has potential. Like this, uh, maybe not even now, but in the future. Very nice. Ooh, what... Okay, the artwork on this, you either hate it or you love it. It's very 90s-like. If you remember the old Magic the Gathering artworks, this kind of looks like this, but there is a little bit more effort into it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Okay, so free cost, blue. Timekeeper's Whim. Deal free arcane dam damage to target hero. If Timekeeper's Whim is played during an opponent's turn, put it on the bottom of your deck. Okay, so you essentially always have an attack if you played it during your opponent's turn. Pretty good. And you will, you will have a red version of this, right? So a red version will be doing what? Well, will it be? Wait, will we have? Will it deal then six damage? Okay, that's, uh, w w let's keep an eye out on this. The red version of Pry. So the the card that I already discussed, the one that we had the foil. This one reveals three cards from your hand, but again, this has no additional value because your opponent still draws a card. Okay. Shrill of school form. Round blade action, two cost, yellow. If you have played or created an aura this turn, Shrill gains plus three attack. So it becomes a 6 attack for 2 cost. It will be a 7 attack on a red version. And 5 attack on a blue version. Mm. If a player created an aura... Hmm, not bad, I guess. A foil version of a high roller! Hey! Okay, the artwork is really... Hearthstone-y, World of Warcraft-like. And the foil is great. It really looks nice. I don't know how much you can see it on the camera, but it does look nice. Okay. Oh, another, another, another potion. 
but excited. Potion of Ironhide. Zero cost blue. Instant. Destroy Potion of Ironhide. Attack action cards you own. Gain plus one defense this turn. So this is a card that has... For a deck that has many attack action cards. And wants to... So, so this is potentially a card for, for um, aggro decks against another aggro deck. When you put it from your sideboard, I guess. Okay. And Guardian Action Attack. Is that a new keyword? Let me check. Thunderquake. Six cost. Yellow. Interesting artwork. Very different. Heave. That is the keyword. Heave three. At the beginning of your end phase, if Th Thunderquake is in your hand and you have an empty arsenal zone, you may pay free and put Thunderquake face up into your arsenal. If you do, create free se seismic surge tokens. Holy. Okay, let's think about this. So this essentially what you want to achieve with this is create seismic, uh, seismic surge tokens for different card than this i guess not an expert so i'll have to ask someone who plays warrior uh, guardian a lot okay but interesting card something something new all right next one wax on we already know this is the yellow version has two defense printed and gets plus, plus two steadfast guardian instant three cost blue prevent the next four damage that will be dealt to a hero this turn by a source of your of your choice so it blocks for damage from one source. You cannot split it. And it's an instant. Okay. I guess that's fine. Um, wild Ride. Brute Action Attack. When you attack with Wild Ride, draw a card, then discard a random card. If a card with six or more attack is discarded this way, Wild Ride gains go again. So this, this actually seems pretty powerful. Two cost, six attack, that most likely will have go again. Because you, when you play Brute, why would you play something that doesn't have six attack? So this 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 actually looks pretty awesome for the Brute players. Bear Fangs, we already had. Timidity Point, we had as well. Read the Glide, the Path. This, yeah, this, we had it as well, but it was the blue version, had plus one attack. Rotary arm we had as well. This is the blue version, plus one attack. A ninja action attack foil. When ride the tailwind hits, the next attack action card with two or less base cost, uh, sorry, base attack, you play this combat chain, gains go again. And this has go again in, on its own. Zero cost red. When ride the tailwind hits, the next attack action card with two or less base you play this combat chain, gains go again. Well, I would have to go through every single attack that Ninja has, but potentially this, this has some merit. Because if your attacks can gain go again just because they are, you know, they're buffed by this, this might be good. But it has to get have two or less bay, best, bay, bay, base attack, so it limits a lot. Ooh, what is this? Talisman of Recompense. Zero cost yellow, go again. Whenever you pitch a card, if you would gain exactly one, instead destroy Talisman of Recompense and gain three. You essentially can ch change a red card into a blue pitch with this. Probably for, for wizards, I would say this is probably the best, right? Because you can create more mana, maybe for a deck with Shock Charmers as well. Whoa, what a artwork as well. Also very 90s. What do we have here? Pierce Reality. Zero cost. Blue. Illusions Action Aura. The first Illusions Action Action card, attack action card, you play each turn has plus two attack. Spectra. Seems pretty okay. Because it costs zero, you just play it. So it works the same... No, it doesn't work the same round because it doesn't have to go again. Uh, but this is pretty formidable because every attack gains plus two attack. That's pretty... That's that's a lot. So you have to destroy this Pierce reality because otherwise 
It can get out of hand pretty quick. Okay. Twin Sisters. A ninja action attack. Choose one. Twin Sisters gain... When this hits, your next attack this combat chain gains plus one. Or... Twin Sisters gain plus one. And this costs one, has go again, and has base two attack. And you have to choose it when you play it. So it has some flexibility. I guess the red version will be actually pretty neat. But it does cost one. But a red version will have three attack. So it will become four. Or it will give plus one attack to the next attack. Actually... I kind of like this as a blue as well, because then it um, you have either the possibility of pitching as a blue, you attack for one, actually yellow is probably the best, because then it cannot be blocked by an item, by like a piece of armor or something, uh, this might be interesting, okay, wild ride by blue, okay, steadfast in, in red version, this one blocks six, and now this is pretty formidable, this is now blocking six from one source for three mana, for three resources. This this might be actually very playable for guardians. In specific matchups, of course, but this looks pretty nice. This looks pretty nice. All right, then we have ride the tailwind that we already had. This one is yellow version. So just last one attack fatigue shot for ranger. One cost blue. Free attack. When Fatigue Shot hits a hero, the best base attack of the first action action card they play during their next turn is halved, rounded up. An attack with 5 base becomes 3. Eh, not a fan of this one. Not a Maybe in some specific matchups as well, maybe uh, against Illusionist or against Bravo, in example. It still needs to hit, right, to have an effect. So, I don't know, we'll see. Zoom in for Mechanologist. When you attack with zoom in, opt X, where X is the number of times you have boosted this combat chain. And it has boosted itself. As an additional cost to play zoom in, you may banish the card of your deck. 5 attack, 2 cost. This is uh, red. Seems pretty okay. There's a lot of opt possibilities, I guess. Reek of Corruption for Runeblade action attack, 3 attack, yellow, 2 cost. If you have played or created an aura this turn, Reek of Corruption gains. When this hits a hero, they discard a card. So you have to create a runechant, an example, right? Because it, runechant is an aura, if I, I think. And then this potentially can discard cards, but it costs 2. I would say might be good, but I'm not sure if it's like, that good to just outright play it in a deck. We'll see. All right, Outlanded Skirmish. Outland Skirmish, uh, yellow version, that creates a copper token, but gives you plus two attack on your next one-handed weapon attack. Again, even bigger than that. Second time I got it, but this time in a, in a red version. And the difference between them is the opt. Okay, so I feel like this, this card might actually be the best when you use it even as a yellow or blue than red. Because it depends on the, the opt. And, oh, a first M. Let's go. Scour. X cost, blue. Destroy, destroy, sorry. X target aura tokens and or auras with cost zero controlled by target hero. Then deal arcane damage to that hero equal to the number of auras destroyed this way. Oh. Can I? Hmm. Because frostbites are auras. But to play this card, you need to destroy the frostbites. So I think you cannot play it on frostbites. But this is amazing against illusionists, right? Because it destroys all the spectra shields. I think against Runeblade as well, because uh, are Runeblade uh, actually Auras? Maybe, I have to ask someone, maybe someone will answer me. This looks pretty okay, and a uh, really neat, uh, neat artwork. Okay, first M from the box.
what do we have here? Phantasmal Haze, we already have it, had it. Outland Skirmish, we had it as well. Coalescent Mirage, we had it as well. Just the Frostbite. Droning Dire, we had two. Pry, we had as well. Shrill or Skull Form, we had as well. Fatigue Shot, but a red version, the one that halves the uh, attack value of the next attack if this hits. But again, it's a, it's a, it costs one and it attacks for five. It needs to hit to have an effect. I'm, so I'm not a fan. We'll see. Uh, and now we have pick a card, any card, a rare for zero, red. Really nice artwork, very ever festy. Look at target's opponent hand, then name a card. Choose a random card from their hand and reveal it. If it's the named card, create a silver token. Repeat this process thrice. What does a silver token do? Did we have it in the game already? I don't even know. I don't even know. Okay, and we get another of the Thunderquake. Uh, with the that this is the card that can go into the arsenal and create surge code uh, surge. Um, search tokens. Okay, interesting. Let's go. New booster pack. So far, only one M and no equipment. I am slightly disappointed. Hopefully, we get a fabled, right? To re uh, compensate for the lack of M's. Would be nice. Blade Runner. Hey! But where is uh, the specific actor that played the one? Okay, well, it costs one. It's a warrior attack reaction. Target one-handed weapon attack gains go again. Your next weapon attack this turn gains plus three. Seems pretty okay. It does cost one. But I feel like this might actually be pretty playable. Okay. Seismic stir for guardian action. Two. Yellow. Creates two search make, Two seismic search tokens and go again. Essentially, you transfer your resources to your next turn, which is not bad. This might be pretty good. Blue Macho Grande, which um, my friend said that the blue version most likely will be very playable. And he might be right. This is 8 attack as a blue. With Dominate built in. This, this might be actually pretty decent. decent. Red Twins uh, Sisters that we already had. Veiled Intentions we already had as well. This one is the blue version, so it only adds plus 2 attack instead of the yellow that adds plus 3. This is the Shrill of the Skull form that has maximum 7 attack if it created an aura this turn. Uh, okay, so the yellow version of Timekeeper's Whim deals 4 damage, so the green, uh, green, red version will deal 5. I was, let's say, not the smartest person uh, when I said it's going to deal 6. I can't count. So, the red version will deal 5 arcane damage for 3 resources. And it will go to the bottom of your deck if you played it during your opponent's turn. This looks like a pretty decent card, I think. A foil rotary arm. Talisman of Tiffs, I think. Hard word for me to read. Go again, blue zero. If an opponent would draw one or more cards during your action phase, instead destroy Talisman of Fifths and they draw that many cards minus one. During your action phase. Also for very specific matchups, right? For very specific matchups. So for someone who's playing on instance, maybe with Tom of Fiendel and stuff like that. But it seems like a decent counter. Decent? Maybe not that super decent. It only makes them draw one less. Really depends on the matchup, I guess. And we have a Rune Blade Incantation. Rune Blood Incantation for one blue. Go again. Rune Blood, uh, Rune Blood Incantation enters the arena with a verse, because this is an aura. The arena with a verse counter on it. At the beginning of your action phase, remove a verse counter from Rune Blood Incantation. If you do, Create a rune chant token. Otherwise, destroy rune blood incantation. Wait. This only has one token on it, right? So why why would I put there has to be a way of adding more tokens to this, I guess. Oh wait, this is a blue version. 
And most likely we're going to have a red version as well that will have like more tokens, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah, um, yeah, that has to be it. Because one token in this card doesn't really make much sense, but it's a blue version. All right. Let's go. Bad beats where they had. Into the swing. Wax on. Time skipper win. Fatigue shot. Reek of corruption. We had all of this spectral shield. Reek of corruption, but in foil. Very purple. High striker. Zero cost red. The next time an attack you control hits this turn. <laughs> Create six copper tokens. Six copper tokens. When you think about it, one copper token, you need to pay four resources to draw a card. <laughs> I, for sure, there's another way of spending the copper tokens. I, I remember one card that was something like that, that I read, but I can remember it. So, okay. <gasps> Oi boy Thank you my friends For sending me this box A non-foil version of Arcanite Skullcap Look at that A legend In this box Let's go It, it is Unlucky that it is not foiled But I'm pretty happy that <laughs> We got it Okay Awesome Please stay here Okay So we have one M and one L out of this box, but if I'm not mistaken, one legend is like way rare, more rare than in a normal expansion pack because this is a supplement, right? So we only have three legend cards in the in the set, and they are more rare and harder to get. Okay, another Blade Runner, Ride the Tailwind, Matro Grande, Twin Sisters, Reek of Corruption. Payload, Pyroglyphic Protection, Foil even bigger than that, but a red version with the Opt-3, but a very nice foil because the armor pieces, the armor pieces and the food and, and drinks are foiled, nothing else. Looks very nice. Maybe not on the camera because it's hard to see, or maybe it's not, but in real life it looks very nice. Pick a card, any card, with the silver tokens. But it's a yellow version, and it repeats itself twice, not three times. We still don't know what this, what does a silver token do, so it's hard to judge this card. But we'll see. Very nice artwork. And we have Haze Bending for Illusionist. Once per turn effect, this is an aura for zero. Whenever Haze Bending or another Illusionist non-token aura you control is destroyed... Create a Spectral Shield token. One more time. Whenever Haze Bending on another illusion is non-token aura your control is destroyed, create a Spectral Shield token. So this is created for a deck that is built around auras. And it has to be illusion is non-token aura. But then you get value out of those destroyed auras, but it only once per turn. Okay, well, this might be actually pretty good, but... Very nice artwork, by the way. Fits for the, to the entire frame. I really like it. Um, interesting. All right, let's go. Another one. Get out of the frame. You boost the pack. Okay. Phantasmal Haze. We got that already. Seismic Star. Ride the Tailwind. In the swing. But the red version. And it has plus three attack. But you had to attack two eyes already this round. I don't know. I don't know about this card. It's It's, it's so specific. Zoom in. Rune chant. Now we have the confirmations and aura, so I wasn't wrong. Okay. Pyroglyphic protection. Oh, a foil M. Wait, what is this? Tree shot. Oh, that's the. That was, I think this was leaked on a on a playmat. This artwork. Blue cost zero cost. Uh, sorry, blue and zero cost. You may activate target bow you control two additional times this turn. Go again. <gasps> Will this actually work in my Lightning Lexi Death Dealer snapshot deck? Because we lost Ball Lightning. And I, let me tell you, that's a big thing. I had this custom, my own creation, 
and I was very proud of it. But without ball lightning, it cannot work. Maybe with this? But it's an M, so we can only have it three times in the deck. But it costs zero. I mean, this has to be created for, for Death Dealer. There's no other way. Has to be Death Dealer because otherwise you're gonna run out of cards very fast. So it has to be a Death Dealer deck. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna tinker with this. We're gonna tinker with this. This is very nice. Second M. High. Str oh, wait. So this was in the foil because I already got a, an M behind this. Okay, so High Striker Blue creates two copper tokens when you con when you attack and hit something and. We got Valda Bright X. Whenever our opponent draws a card. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This was already spoiled, right? But it's an M. It's a young hero M. Okay. Okay. Pretty good booster pack, I would say. Two M's. One foil. All right, let's go. All right, we have seen this common already. This one as well. This one as well. Oh, come on, silver token. We need to know what silver does. Maybe it draws a card for free. For free resources, I mean. All of this we already had. Wax on. But foil. Pretty standard foil. Clarity Potion. Something new. Instant. Destroy Clarity Potion. Up two. For zero. No go again on this one when you play it. So this is like basically created for wizards. But how playable will this be in the wizards? Because you have to sacrifice one card of your hand that you will not use to for defending yourself, right? So this might be pretty risky. We'll see. And another M. Ooh, for, for a mage. Sigil of Parapets. It's pretty funny for Polish people, don't ask. Uh, one cost. Blue. Two defense. While Sigil of Parapets is defending, because this is a wizard defense reaction... Whenever you play a wizard card, Sigil of Parapets gets gains plus two. Okay, so... Uh, okay, well, this seems pretty good, right? Because your entire deck is made to be played, if you play Kano, typically during your opponent's turn. So your defense... You, you defend yourself with this one. It has two defense. And during that attack, you damage your opponent with instance. So this gets buffed. So you essentially get a 4 or a 6 defense um, reaction card while dealing damage to your opponent. So we can stop the bleeding and deal damage at the same... This is pretty good, right? This has to be playable in, in, in Kano. This has to be playable in Kano. And I actually got um, the boots for him. So maybe I'll try to make a deck. We'll see. Alright, what do we have? Macho Grande, Blade Runner, uh, plus one as a blue version. Twin Sisters, Payload, again, oh, the commons are getting too high, weight. stack is getting too high. I'm actually kind of happy that this, those booster packs have less commons, because at some point you get too many of them, you know? Payload, we already had, zoom in, Pyroglyphic Protection, read the Glide Path, Bad Beats, uh, Red Version, so 456. <gasps> Callfoil M! Let's go! But for Brute, me! School Crushes. Wait, so I had two foils and one booster pack. As a C, a common, and then in the, in the second slot, because we still have one more card below this. So you can get two foils in one pack. Was that like that before? I don't even know. Whenever you roll a 5 or 6 on a die, your Brute Attack at Attacks gain plus one attack. Whenever you roll one on a die, this rolls school crushes. Battle worn. I mean, for brutes, this is probably a good card, right? This is for arms, and so it's called for you. Looks pretty nice. Okay. And we have a passing mirage. Your first illusionist attack each turn loses and can't gain phantasm. For zero. Hmm. Probably worth it, right? Depends on the deck, but I, I would I, I can see where it would be like, yeah, this is pretty worth it. Okay. Steadfast, Bear Fangs, where they had this, Blade Runner, Read the Glide Path, Rotary Arm, 
Timidity point, droning dire, all of this we already had. Read the glide path, foiled. Potion of luck, instant. Destroy potion of luck, shuffle your hand and arsenal into your deck, then draw that many cards. But it also shuffles in the arsenal as an instant. And you draw that many cards. So it kind of like it's, um, you just, you have a bad hand. You can restart. Maybe for Rangers that play New Horizon. Because if you can do New Horizon, then you can, like, okay, let's say your first round. You do your first round or, or your first turn of the game. You have Voltaire and you, and you can pack one card into your arsenal on your opening round, then you play Potion of Luck, and then you can use it to draw more cards in the upcoming round. I don't know. I, 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 can, I, I don't think you can use this offensively, but also just only when you don't really like your hand, right? I'll have to think more about this. T-Bone. What is this? There's a, there's a mechanologist on a bike, on a motorbike here. What the hell? Zero cost. If you control a card on the combat chain that was boosted, the defending hero must defend T-Bone with an equipment they control if able. For zero cost, red, three attack, with a boost. If you control a card on the combat chain that was boosted, so you had to attack before, but it forces an opponent to block with an equipment. This is actually pretty neat. Because what you can do, depends on the matchup, right? But you can force your opponent to block with something that has blade break. Th this is actually amazing, right? Or oh, this has to be good. This has to be a good card. 100%. Of course, not in every single matchup. But this has to be good. Let's go, my friends. Steadfast. Ride the Tailwind. Wild Ride. Wax On. Cry. Fatigue Shot. Payload. Wait. This has... This has, uh, like, a full artwork. Was that the case with the with crew? I'm a new player, so I, I might be missing a lot of context. Zero cost. Blue. 100 wins. Ninja action attack. Combo. If 100 wins was the last attack this combat chain... This attack gains plus one for each other card named 100 wins you control on the combat chain. Go again. So, this has to be nine versions, uh, sorry, three versions of it, right? Red, yellow, and blue. Potentially, you can do a massive round with this. And it's a beautiful artwork, and the foil looks awesome. So, if you play this card, you need to play it nine times in your deck. And then, potentially... If you, let's say, draw 400 wins, you draw four, right? First one deals one, second one deals two, third one deals three, and the fourth one deals four. Uh, sorry, five. Wait, what? No, wait. First one deals one, then two, then three, then four. All of them cost zero. But uh, remember, this is the blue version. The other versions will have more attack. This might be pretty good. But it also very nicely, it looks very nicely. Okay. Amulet of Assertiveness. Okay. Zero cost yellow. Go again. Uh, if, if whenever I see, I don't read it yet, but whenever I see an item that has go again, I already like it because I know you can be more flexible. Attack reaction. Destroy Amulet of Assertiveness. Target attack action gains. Um, when this, sorry, target attack gains. When this hits, Banish the top card of your deck. If it's an attack attack, uh, attack action card, you may play this turn. You may play it this turn. Activate this ability only if you have four more cards in your hand. So you need four cards in your hand. And if this hits, banish the top card. It, okay. But you need four cards in your hand. So you need to attack with something from our arsenal. So this is like kinda, this is actually pretty great for death dealers, because when you have it on your on your on your board, you draw a card 
when you put something into your arsenal from the death dealer and then you proc this. This, this might be pretty good. This might be pretty good. I don't know about other classes, but this might be pretty good. Okay, and we got another 100 wins. 100 wins in the red version has free attack. So even if you, if you play 300 wins in one turn, that will be red. You have 3 into 4 into 5 attack. Just go again. I don't know, man. This, this might be pretty awesome. This is the difference between the artworks when it's foiled and full artwork and not. And the full artwork looks amazing. Look at the difference. Like you have this kind of um, depth into the card right now. This looks pretty awesome. Oh no, if, oh no, I already know myself. If I'll be playing Ninja with this in my deck, I will have to play nine versions of the full art. I'll bankrupt. All right, let's go. Ride the Tailwind. Phantasmal Haze, Wild Ride, Zoom In, Seismic Church. We still didn't get the silver token. Timidity Point, Droning Dire, Fatigue Short Foil, Amulet of Heaven Call. Haven Call, sorry, not Heaven, Haven. Uh, zero cost, blue. Go again, like it. We have Defense Reaction. Destroy Amulet of Haven Call. Search your deck for a card named Rally the Rear Guard. Add it to this chain link as a defending card, then shuffle. Activate this ability only if you have no cards in hand. I'm not sure I like this. This is a tutor for defensive reaction, but you need to sacrifice a card from your hand to have this available, and also you can't have any cards in your hand when you want to activate this. Someone much smarter than me would have to like estimate if this is worth it. Slice and dice. So we had cards like this named exactly with this uh, with this name in other card games and they were always broken. <laughs> Zero cost red. Whenever you attack with a sword or a dagger this turn, if it's your first weapon attack this turn, it gains plus one. If it's your second weapon attack this turn, it gains plus three. And that is broken, right? <laughs> you gain plus four, but split between different sources of damage. Like, this is amazing, right? This has to be amazing. Because your point, when you play a warrior, you have two weapons. Typically, right? I mean, it doesn't even have to be two weapons. You can play one 100 weapon that can attack twice. And then you... Oh my god, this is good, right? This is a lot of chip damage. This card is great. Have to be. I'm not an expert, but it has to be a good card. What do I have here? Colescent Mirage, where we had that. Blade Runner, Twin Sisters. Timekeeper's Whim, the red version, finally, so it deals 5 damage. Fatigue Shot. Reek of Corruption. Payload. In the Swing, Foil. Okay, I, I still don't know if this is going to be a good card or not, but because it, it requires the player to attack two times already, and then your target weapon is plus one. I, I, this, this, is, this seems really unrealistic. Amulet of Echoes. Go again. Zero cost. Destroy Amulet of Echoes. Target hero discards two cards. This sounds powerful, but now there's a, probably a hook, right? Activate this ability only if they have played two or more cards with the same name this turn. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't play 100 wins when someone has this in the sideboard. <laughs> I guess. You know? Um, I mean... You can play this in specific matchups, I guess. Right? This might be a... I mean, this, this is actually a very cool card, because it has go again. So you just play it, and every single deck has multiple copies of their cards. Right? And the most, let's say, fundamental cards in your deck, you typically play them like nine times. And this works in any turn. So it's either this... Or it's, or it's this... Wait, when I think about it, this is actually a staple, right? I would want to put this almost in all of my decks. Now when I think about it. Because I play this whenever I can. And then it stays on the board. And at some point, there's a very high chance that my opponent will play two cards of the same name. But even if he will not, maybe he will not play the two cards of the same name... 
in the same in this in the order that he would like it to do um that sequence or he will not even play it because you know we can always say like okay um i will play this the, the, the two cards of the same name last but maybe the sequencing doesn't work this this is wow this is actually a very neat card i really like the design this is actually pretty cool. I like this card. Amulet of Echoes. I love this. This, this is pretty cool. I, I really like it. It's like a niche card, but when you think about it, it's not really niche. Pierce Reality already had one. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Alright. Ride the Tailwind. The Fangs. Colors and Mirage. Did I get already all commons? I think so. Cry, Shrill, Wild Ride in Foil, Talisman of Cremation. Go again. I already do like it. When you play a card from your banished zone, destroy Talisman of Cremation and name a card. Banish all cards with the chosen name with the chosen name from each opposing hero's graveyards. Oof, very specific. That is a very, very specific item you need to play a card from a banished zone so only few classes can do that and then you banish cards from graveyards from both players no sorry from only your opponents hmm very specific probably just dependent on the matchup right um high roller where they had it this is the third high roller i i guess i high rolled with high roller cards all right, Mirage, we had it. Bad Beats, Seismixter, In the Swing, Timekeeper's Whim, Zoom In, Fatigue Short, Payload, but in a in a foil version. Talisman of Warfare. Okay, has go again. Is yellow, so th th I don't read it yet. But if there's a yellow in the cost, I'm assuming it's more powerful than the rest of the items that we had. Zero cost, by the way. Go again. When a source you control deals exactly two damage to an opposing hero, destroy Talisman of Warfare and all cards in all arsenals. Symmetric. So it destroys your arsenal as well. And it's not easy to trigger it because it needs to deal exactly two. So that means that your opponent can also time it when it gets triggered because you will choose how much he blocks. You attack for five, he blocks with two. It doesn't get triggered. He blocks with three. It gets triggered. He uses items to change the amount of the block. It might not trigger or it might trigger. And it, it, it has to be destroyed when you deal exactly to damage. Okay, very interesting card again. It will be very specific to... Like, you will need a deck that will want to play this. This is not a card that you will just, will just pitch in into every deck and be like, fine. And remember, this is a source. It's not about attack action cards. This is a source. So if you deal, an example, one source of two arcane damage, which cannot be blocked, then it triggers. So this is more useful in decks that can deal arcane damage in the form of two, like an example, Rosetta. Right? If you attack with Rosetta, you trigger Talisman of Warfare. Almost every time, unless someone arcane barriers it. Interesting card. Very interesting one. Runeblade Incantation. We had the blue version. Okay, and I was right. This one has two counters on it. So the red version will have three. So essentially you get, at the beginning of the action phase, you get a runeshan token. And this costs one. So the red version creates three runeshan tokens over time. So I'm not a wooden blade expert, but it feels like the yellow and red version might be actually playable. It's an aura, stays on the in the game. I don't know. Well, again, we have to ask a expert on wooden blades, but it feels like it might be a decent card. Well, right. I think I really got all the all the comments already, but I didn't still get the silver token, and I really want to know what it does. Pry. Man, this card really has a fantastic artwork, but I don't know. I don't like it. School form. Oh, okay. Foil version here. Life of the party. 
So this is the one that was the um, that was uh, leaked. No, sorry, not leaked. Uh, spoiled already, right? You may discard or destroy a card you control named Crazy Brew. Yeah, that's the one. Rather than pay Lies of Party uh, cost, which is two. If you do, choose all modes. Otherwise, choose one at random. And you have gain two life. Um, when it hits, you gain plus two attack or gains go again. I mean, this card is actually pretty neat, right? When you pay with Crazy Brew. But the question is, is, cr is two cards worth to have a combined... 6 attack, 2 gain of life, and a go again. Is that worth it? But it can be divided between turns, right? In one turn you play Crazy Brew, but I think Crazy Brew doesn't have go again, so you have to end your turn with it, and then you have life of the party available. It's it's a very big question. And another Runeblade incantation, hello! Am I meant to play a Runeblade here? Macho Grande, Phantasmal Haze, Wild Ride... Payload, Fatigue Shot, Zoom In, Pyroglyphic Protection, Emeritus Scalding, 2 cost blue. Deal 2 Arcan damage to target hero. If Emeritus Scalding is played during an opponent's turn, instead deal 4 Arcan damage to them. For 2 cost, it's a blue. That's a good deal. Right? You have a possibility of dealing 4 damage for 2 cost. Which feels already good. And it's a blue card. Okay, this might be pretty nice. Amulet of Oblation. Zero cost, go again. Blue. Instant. Destroy Amulet of Oblation until end of the turn. Target attack action card gains. If this would be put into graveyard, instead put it on the bottom of its owner's deck. Activate this ability only if a card has entered graveyard this turn. Eh. Not a fan. Another T-Bone. A yellow, yellow one. We had a... Um, red one, I think? Before? Where's the T-Bone? Here we go. Yeah, we had a red one. I mean, this card... I, I don't know. I don't play Mechanologist, but, but I feel like T-Bone is gonna be massive in the metagame. Skirmish. Ride the Tailwind. Phantasmal Haze. Seismic Stir. Rotary Arm, Tibidate Point, Droning Dyer, Passing Mirage in a foil version. The oh my god, it's beautiful. The foil is very classy. It's very sharp and, and, and in very small areas. It really looks awesome. Oh wow. Healing Potion. No go again, but it go again after using it. Action. Destroy healing potion, gain two life. Nice artwork. Would I play this? Probably not. 100 wins! Let's go! But, um... A normal version. Man, if I'll play ninja again, and I have all the cards for the ninja, because I played ninja, it was my first deck, I will really have to get eight more full artworks, man. But I will tell you one thing, unpacking the paper booster packs feels much better than the normal ones. Okay, so far all the commons are known. Cry, another bear of fangs in foil. Smashing good time. The next time an attack action card hits a hero this turn, you may destroy an item they control with cost 2 or less. If Smashing Good Time is played from Arsenal, the next attack action card you play this turn gains plus 1. Wait. Items are not equipment. No, they can't be, right? No, they can't. They're, they're, no, no, they're not, right? No, no, no. They're not. Okay. I was like, this might be too good. Um... This has to hit. It has to be cost two or less. I'm guessing there will be a version of yellow and red here. The next attack action card you play this thing is plus one. Hmm. From Arsenal. Not terrible. But depends on how much, uh, how many items will be played in the meta game. Oh, what is this? And wait, it's a ninja equipment for the head. Wait. It's another mask. 
Mask of the Pouncing Lynx. When an attack action card you control hits, you may destroy Mask of Pouncing Lynx. If you do, search your deck for an attack action card with two or less attack, banish it, then shuffle. You may play it this turn. Is this better than Mask of Madness? Madness. This is Mask of Momentum. It doesn't present you a threat constantly each turn, but it is more explosive because you need to hit and you get another attack. So I feel like for constructed, Mask of Momentum still gonna be the weapon of choice or, or head of choice. But for Blitz, this might be actually way stronger for Blitz. And also like Mask of Momentum, you don't get value every time because opponents might play smart around it. With this, you will get value out of it 100%. Okay, well, this is... Oh, this is gonna be... So difficult to judge which one will be better. Oh, really difficult. And then also maybe there's a weapon that will be different because you, you want to play Mask of Madness with Kodachis. But if you don't play Kodachis, then Mask of Madness is not that great anymore. While this might be fantastic, right? It has two armor as well. But, okay, never mind. It doesn't matter. <laughs> because you have to destroy to get the effect. And it's blade break. Um, I don't know. Very interesting, right? Very interesting. All right, we have two booster packs left, my friends. Two booster packs left. Let's go. Maybe Fabled now? We already had one L, right? A Fabled would be nice. I would love to see what Fabled do we even have in this expansion, because I don't know. Okay. 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 We know everything of this, uh, from, from this, from this common pool. Mirage foil. Very nice. Okay. Ah, blue version, life of the party. Okay, and a blue version of Slice and Dice. And the blue version of Slice and Dice only is different because it, it doesn't give plus three attack on the second attack, but it gives plus one. So the yellow version will, play, will have plus two. I don't know, I feel like for Warrior, the Slice and Dice might be really insanely strong. All right, my friends. Last booster pack of Flesh and Blood Everfest. I mean, I'll do more openings when I'll get more boxes, but for now, this is it. Those are the 10 last cards that I got from this premiere booster box. And I record this before we even have the spoilers, so I literally don't know the cards. Okay. 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 Foiled Veiled Intentions. Also very nice artwork. Very artsy. Bingo! <laughs> no. It's an M. Oh. One cost generic action attack. When Bingo hits a hero, they reveal a card from their hand. If an attack action card is revealed this way, Bingo gains go again. If a non-attack action card is revealed this way, draw a card. If you want to benefit from the draw card, then you have to give this already go again. If you don't give it go again, and you draw a card, then you can put it into your arsenal. So this is kind of like, um, like, uh, what was the name? I have it next to me, actually. Snatch. But not exactly like it. And it costs resources, but it has five attack. If you play against a wizard, an example, then this card is pretty good, because they don't have any attacks. So you will, let's say you play Lightning Lexi, you give it go again, and you attack, It your opponents let it even hit for one, and then most likely you draw a card and it has go again. But how will will fare against a very wide metagame? I don't know. Okay, and last card? Rev Another M! Two M's in one booster pack, look at that. Very nice. Revel in Runeblood. <laughs> Artwork is pretty crazy. Zero cost red. 
If you have played an attack action card and another non-attack action card this turn, create four runechant tokens. At the beginning of your end phase, destroy all runechants you control. An attack action card and another uh, and uh, this turn create four runechan tokens. At the beginning of your end phase, destroy all runechants you control. So you have to use it. Okay, so you need to attack. You need to play a non-action attack. Then you use this, and then you need to attack again to spend your runechants. So essentially, if you do that, then for zero you deal four as arcane, which is not bad but sounds like pretty hard to do all right my friends we uh, let's sum it up we had arcanite school cup which is already amazing right and we had one cold foil only one cold foil out of this booster box uh which was the brute equipment and then we had three six seven m's so eight m cards and one l in this box I would call this a success, right? Oh, and one full artwork. I forgot. No, wait, no. This one? No. Where is, where is it? Was it here? Here we go. And the one full artwork, which is probably worth more as well. So, pretty good booster box. Anyway, my friends, thank you very much for watching. We're going to see each other with next booster openings, um, because I'll be doing those probably every single expansion. And I ordered, I think, like four or eight booster boxes of uh, Everfest. So we're going to open those pretty soon. Thank you for watching. And thank you for sending this uh, to me, my friends, at LSS. See you guys around. Bye-bye.